Hey y'all, so happy Saturday. We're back with another project. Um, today I'm going to make a traveler's notebook style um, journal. I thought it would be fun and I have my new October printables out. So I was gonna make the whole journal with the printables. Um, this month I added um, a lot of extras in, in terms of um, things that you can make pockets, tags, belly bands, all that kind of yummy stuff that we like to put in our journals. And what it does is it allows for the text to be different sizes as well. So even if you're not going to use it for journaling or for junk journaling or anything like that, that's not your thing. You just like straight collage, then it gives you the text in a lot of different sizes. That way you can alter your collages nicely. So I'm going to show you the pack. This is already the cover. I did it on cardstock. So this is printed out on my HP 5660. It's a inkjet so it does bleed a little bit but I happen to like that so I work with it um, in fact I wanted to do that so when I um, this is what the original looks like printed out this would be the color palette of of it when you when you actually print it out print the pack out but this is with it stained so what I do is I very lightly I just put a I spritz just a little bit of coffee then I actually just rub it around my fingers and spritz a little bit more because I want to control the bleeding because you just want to put it on there and then it just bleeds away you have to be very careful but if you do it like that you get this really subtle kind of like you know found in an attic or a flea market kind of stain it gives a staining that looks more like moisture staining versus a flood <laughs> so you get this really beautiful quality plus the paper gets a little more crinkly and it just gives it that that old world effect so first of all I want to stop and say thank you so much for continuing to support me reaching um, 10k you guys are off awesome you've been reposting um, on Facebook and Instagram um, tagging others please continue to do that and it's funny because generally I miss all my milestones like I can reach those those milestones and then like I'm on the other side I'm like oh my god I didn't think about a giveaway I didn't think about doing anything to celebrate because I'm always so busy in my studio but um a few of you reminded me this time, you're getting close to 10K and I'm like, I am. So fortunately, Jelly Arts, Arteza, Lebazon Brushes, um, and a few others have just stepped up to support me in reaching 10K. So we have a bunch, a bunch of gifts, like some of the best gifts. I think I have like basically 10 sort of grand prize type of type of gifts. I mean, there's they're nice ones. And um, including my, um, I have, my apron designs I use I have, I have a number of different designs but it's on Robin McClendon dot Robin McClendon designs dot com and so I'm giving a couple away of my my um, smocks my artist smocks as well so there's gonna be a lot of fun things there so just continue to shout it out comment go over to my blog the link is below all the details for the um, the giveaway are there and just have your fun following them don't wear yourself out trying to do it all in one setting you know we're um you know we have a few hundred away so i figure a couple more weeks and we'll be ready to do the giveaway so um yeah i just wanted to say that again so it's still ongoing so continue to do whatever you know you know your move to do it's always appreciated and if you also want to be a part of the giveaway and win some goodies and I got a lot of goodies. I mean, everybody's going to be a winner. You guys know me. Mm. Having my morning coffee. So, okay, so now what I did is I, first of all, this is a a cover for one of my Jelly Junkadories, <clears throat> which you guys have seen these this one before. So this is my leather cover, but I always I also do an internal cover. So this one I did out of an uh, ecot, and then I paper backed it with my um, scripting. So, um, this is, I just love this junk journal. Oh, I, I just, we have the best fun with this thing. This I do a lot on, we do the pages over on Patreon. Look at all these yummies. This is a, like a belly band. Envelope flip outs with books in them. I don't know if I've ever really showed you guys. This is another belly band. And then we did like a little flower glass scene with an with a uh, French um, receipt so you know my style of junk journaling is 
probably just a little different than most uh, you see. So this is um, sewn in there. But it's still... <clears throat> um, you know, using the tucks and, and fold. So this tuck I made out of the full figure, because I really like that figure and I want it on the page. I took the full figure to make this sort of tuck. And then I did this passbook style booklet because our theme is male art and passbooks of distant places. So that's the theme of this journal, um, of this junk journal. And so we take all of our bits and pieces that are left over from our full collage journaling and stuff that we do over on Patreon. And then we take all our bits and pieces and we use it in our junk journal. And we use junk journal in the terms to mean um, like all those bits and pieces you have left over in your studio. Like I have a whole tray of them up here that, you know, you're not going to get rid of. See, I have a whole tray. I just kind of put them in this tray and then I can pull from them when I'm working on my journal. I'm not going to throw these away. These are a lot of little yummy pieces, right? So we... Um, use junk journal to mean like all of our scraps and just doing neat things with things that otherwise would get thrown away um we have our jelly prints in here it's a jelly printed little booklet so yeah tags so this this tag has like a piece of mylar with my scripting on it um so anyway i just thought i would show you guys since so we do this traveler's notebook style Thing a lot and I just thought since this month's theme was I was able to do to um, really work all these beautiful um, vintage just beautiful Asian uh, vintage antique Asian um, script that one of my patrons sent me oh I just love that woman she is just so kind she's like my she's like an angel <laughs> a, a, a patron angel she just sent me an entire ups box i'm talking the box was huge i mean huge like a moving box full of all kinds of scripting but one whole box was nothing but asian so i went through this month and i just pulled some of it out this is my scripting so i mixed some of my scripting in with it some bits and pieces that i had um so this is, I made these collages. So we have this collage, which is what I'm doing the cover from. So I'll just flip through them real quickly so you can see what this month's look like. There are 20 of them. They're always $6. Um, the link will be below as always. But I just thought we could all have a lot of fun with them. So these are two um, master collage boards I made. Because I wanted to give you guys some, like collage, like a master collage board. And when I make mine, I don't cut mine up. I make them and then I use it over and over and over again. So these are the ones that I made. Um, one was using all straight lines, all straight edge. And then this was using the torn edge. So I did two different styles kind of edging. So these are the originals. And so I made copies of them. So they're in here. So that's neat because you just got a lot of different ways that you can cut these. And I mean, you know, you could just think about a lot of ways to use them, right? This is another one of the scripts. I love this. It has like the red marking like it was um, like it's a handwriting um, like it's practicing the scripting. And so it was like all the different um, corrections. They were in red all through this entire book. This is my this is my scripting using my new stencils, which will be out very soon. I'm working with I stencils, so you can always just keep an eye on their website. But I as soon as they release. I will make the announcement to everyone. Um, there, it, it should be in a couple of weeks, but they're going to be some good ones. So um, let me keep these in order because if I don't, then I get confused. Okay. So this is some more of the Asian text. It really took me a lot work in this pack because I really wanted to work the colors to get them warm enough, but not get too far away from the original coloring because you can imagine the original coloring is sort of like this gray creamy color kind of color so i kind of didn't want to get too far away from it but i wanted to warm it up a little bit so there's all types of scripting in here i mean this could be a collage base in itself and you could build up from it and remember you can do the jelly printing glazing on these that i've shown you before so it's very easy to take and make these have a tendency to look like a jelly print and then you can work them in with your other jelly prints and stuff that's why i came up with that glazing technique myself because i wanted to be able to integrate um 
photocopies into my work. I mean, there's a lot of yummies. This script is just incredible. And then I did some more collaging so that there's circular pieces and different elements that you guys could just kind of pull from um, in your own collaging. This was a book cover right here. And then I created this, um, this element on top. I just thought that the cover itself of the book was just so beautiful. Ooh. So, you know, you could use this as, as an element and start a collage base from it. You can just cut it all up. You could cover this over it with, you know, whichever you want to do. Now, this is where we get into the collage element. So this is where things get a bit smaller. And I kind of did them like this with the, with the edge so that it wasn't a sharp edge and they can integrate. But you could tear these as a long strip and get various different scripts together. You could tear them in blocks. You, you know, it gives you a smaller version of, let's say... Let's pull any one of these. So let's say this one. You see the difference? This is a larger version and this is a smaller. So it gives you the same text, but it allows you to just work with smaller sections as well. So that's why I designed them like this. And then this would be like the belly band. Um, these make great, these are like tags. I've turned these into tags and you'll see us working with these over the course of making the book, but like for instance, I print it out on cardstock and then this is just a tag. I just cut the tops off, but I didn't want to make it in a tag format because people like all different kinds of tags and some people may not even want a tag. So then it's just smaller pieces of script that could be pockets. They can just be ripped up and be smaller collage elements because the text is at a different, um, you know, point. And then this right here, you're going to see we're having a lot of fun with this because I made folding booklets with this but here again these can just be tags they can be individual um what yeah uh, just collage pieces at a smaller size and then i did i went even smaller for smaller tags smaller booklets just the text even smaller for you know for tinier collage elements these would make good atc cards where you know they could just be a foundation could be built up on them um, pretty quickly and just have fun with them jelly print on top and then these are the washi tape so I did these strips so that you can make because you guys have seen me make washi tape before um, and we'll be using some of it today so these strips are all ready to go just to do washi tape or you could do whatever else with them so that's the pack it's six dollars the link will be below um, I really had fun making this one and I am working on the um, because I've got a lot of requests for um, Western, you know, um, vintage letters and papers and stuff like that. So we'll be working on those as well. But this I'm really proud of. I love this, this one and I will be using it quite a bit. Okay. Now, and remember when you download from Teachable, that link never expires. So it's always there, over there for you. You'll never, you know, you never have to worry about, oh, I'll... What if, if I lose the link or don't hurry up and download it, it's always there for you. That's why I use that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our cover. So I'm going to start with our cover because it's going to be the first thing you need to do because it needs to dry. So um, we'll do this and then I'm going to stop the video. I'll come back once it's dry and then we'll, we'll you know, we'll go on from there with all of our other um pieces because when I you know I want to kind of finish through the video and not uh, kind of keep on stopping you know so I'll let this dry and then from there we can kind of have smooth sailing okay so this is just a cotton fabric that was already kind of like on the it was a it was a this kind of coppery brown color but I also coffee stained it a little bit more um so what I want to do is I want these edges to extend beyond my paper because this is going to be the outside of the book and so this is going to be the inside. And I decided I wanted to do that because I definitely wanted it, it to have more of more flexibility. If you take paper and fabric and cover it, you can put it on the outside or the inside, but it just gives it just a neat flexibility. So I thought that this is one that can be put inside of another journal. It can be a journal on, on its own. Um, so I want to just sort of figure out, I have this little ripped edge. 
um, just do it like this. <laughs> so I'm going to have a, just a little bit beyond, beyond. So that's kind of what I'm figuring here. So I think right there is good. So rip, rip, rip that. And yep, that's good. So just a little bit of frayed edge. I just like the frayed edge. You don't have to do the frayed edge. You can actually just do the fabric right inside the borders or exactly to match it. Um, but I know I want this little frayed edge, so I'm kind of giving myself about a uh, about a quarter of an inch, I would say that is, all the way around. Just, just kind of seeing the best edge to work with here. Okay. Let's go with this. Okay, so let's grab that bit and we're good okay so now we're going to actually put this down like we did in our altered book where um, I use the PVA and my glue brush and um, I'm just gonna glue this these surfaces together and then we're gonna put it under weight like we did with our book and we're gonna let it dry few hours get it good and dry or you could do this overnight and then you know come back to it so what I did also is I don't know if you can tell but let me see you can see see how there's like this it's a brown edge going around the print Let me see. Let me just put it against a white piece of paper. That's probably going to be better. It's a little brown edge. Come on. Right there. So what I did is before I started staining it, once I ripped it, I took my stays on in the spice chai and I literally just went around the edge. I'm not going to, I don't want to do it now because I wanted it to dry because I don't want when I go to to glue this I don't want the the ink to spread out but I, I went all the way around the edges before I coffee stained it now the stays on is definitely permanent so it's not going to bleed that's why it's there so nice and sharp but it just gives us that finished edge so when we do go to do um, to glue this down it's just a nice finished edge already there okay so um, just if you have if you have a stays on in a permanent ink or something like that, you know that you want, it works really nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this on. So I'm go, I'm going to put the glue on which surface? I'm waiting for you to answer. <laughs> of course, the paper because it's the more stable surface. We always glue on our most stable surface. So if I were gluing like a really thin Japanese paper to this then this would be the most stable surface. Then I would glue up the paper, I mean the, the fabric, and then I would put that thin paper down. But in this case, this is this cardstock is more stable than this. So let's put the glue here, and then we can lay it down more easily on there. So always think in terms of gluing your most stable surface, and you'll have a lot more success um, in gluing. So I'm going to get a chunk down there. I want to get, I need to get another one of these gallons. The company that I used to buy that for is no longer in business. They haven't been around for a long time. So I've got to find another bookmaking um, supplier, like, you know, traditional books. Um, let me find something here to work on. This, this glue is going to come off the edge, so let's, let's be ready for it. This 
So, hope you guys had a good week this past week. I did. I've just been crazy busy here in the studio and with my projects and um, I did my intuitive scripting as a lot of you know you guys were in that course um, and that was a lot of fun so we finished that up on Wednesday was our second module um, I really had a good time with that one so I'll be offering it again and I'll let everybody know um, And so, yep, it was a good week. Busy. Okay, so we got a good amount of glue on here, which I'm happy about that. So it's not, it's not like running, and they're not puddles of it, but it's definitely a good layer. Main thing is to get these edges, but you know we can always go back and grab these edges with um, with our our glitter glue because we have this little metal point and that always gets into the creases good. So I think I want to go this way with it. This is the way I had it laid out. No, I had it laid out like this. Okay, so let's get it nice and flat. And let's get this is the right way. I'm gonna stand up so I can get this right. <laughs> Slide it down a little bit. This is the tricky part. Let's do this again start it this way let's kind of get it from top to bottom side to side try it like that yeah I think that's a better okay so let me get my a little smoother card here okay I'll flip it over I want to start from the inside and pull and stretch this this fabric so we want it smooth in here a little, you'll find a little bit of the a little bit of the glue will wick through but it won't matter because it's going to it's going to dry the nice thing about it is you can really pull and stretch this fabric. So use the card to really get these creases out. And with enough glue on there, it gives you enough time to mess with it and pull it a bit until before it sets up. So there we go. So I can take my um, so a little bit of glue still on this brush. Okay. That's looking good on this side too. Let me get these other ends. The end sometimes, you know, it's where the, the least amount of glue was or we were picking it up quite a bit. And even after this dries, if there's any little places that are, that are showing, we can just put the, um, the tip of the, the, 
our glue underneath there and just so you can see the staining better now so the coffee staining is really subtle but it gives that you know that aged look this is going to be the inside like i said so this is what the outside is going to look like when it's all done i'm not going to fold it yet until it is dry but that's going to be neat so it kind of gives this little extra bit to gives this extra bit to your journal when this dries i may just rip this down a little bit more just to get rid of this edge a little bit but that'll be okay no problem there and you probably could actually have put the whole thing down on a large sheet and then when done ripped it that may work as well i haven't tried that so i don't really know but it, I, theoretically i think it would well we'll know because i'm going to do it here once it dries um so now let's just put this to rest and um once it's dry we'll come back and we'll work on cutting our papers then you know theoretically you would think that i would just start doing the papers now but i don't want to do that until i actually fold this thing down i know exactly what my width is and then i can play with the um with the width and stuff of my papers then so we're going to do it a stage at a time so we'll be back um when this is dry Alrighty. okay so now this is nice and dry and uh, beautifully flat. So now we can go on to um, working on our inside pages um, to go with our cover. All right. So what I've done is I have um, egg, uh, stained, this is coffee and tea, um, some black tea, some coffee um, staining. And so I did this I did a, uh, a few sheets and I really like this. I think I'm going to keep this as a cover that's going to go, uh, the cover sheet, which is going to be the first sheet. And um, basically what I did is I stained a lot of papers front and back. And then I ran them through my printer because I like the way the prints look on the stained paper. As we can see, they're quite a bit different, right? This would be that one. <clears throat> and the similar one to that would be this stained. So remember, you can use your printables on just coffee stain, paper, tea stain it, use avocado, any kind of dye, anything <clears throat> that you want to dye your papers with food coloring if you want colors. And then um, you can run those through the printer. I'm using the Hammer Mill um, 25 pound, I believe it is. And it's a really nice heavyweight paper. It takes the color nicely and it's strong for dyeing and then going through the printer. So what I do is I definitely stain the papers. I let them dry. Um, if they're a little bit crinkly or wavy, I will iron them. I have a specifically iron and iron and more in my studio for that. And then I run them through the printer and they go through fine, like really no problems. So. I went through and selected some of the ones that I wanted. This is the collection. So now let's just get them in order. So like I said, this is going to be my first page. I'll put that there. Um, I'm going to flip some of these so that, um, let's put this one here. Just kind of want to get the order. Maybe this with this, so it's not quite so busy pattern, pattern. <clears throat> like that one there. Put this one there. Let me see. Okay, that one go there. That's nice. Keep that like that. <clears throat> so when we go to flip them as a book, I kind of like to just go through and look and see if this is how I want them. Because I don't want all of the print facing forward. Kind of try to mix it up some. Okay, that, that should be pretty good. Okay. And then this is going to be on top. 
Okay, so then what I do, once I've gotten my order pretty much together, what I'm going to do, as opposed to tearing these this time, I do both ways. Either I tear them or I um, will cut them with the X-Acto. I'm going to cut them with the X-Acto just to have straight edges and, um, and also just for the purposes of the video so that uh, in order for me to tear these sheets the way I really would like to, It'll take more time than what we want to do on screen. But just know you can, um, I'll show both ways because I, I think a lot of people know how to tear, but I don't think maybe people know the best way to really trim down their edges uh, when they want to be able to do that. So I'll show that because I have these extra edges on here from, you know, when you print and it doesn't go full to page. I definitely know I want to get rid of those anyway. So, and we're going to do the top because we have the problem, the same challenge at the top. And also, this is already going to be too big for my book, as you can see. So I'm kind of doing the traveler's notebook size. So now what I'm going to do that I have my pages pretty much figured out is I'm going to go ahead and get this folded and done right so that's about right um, we can see top to bottom front to back just kind of getting it even pretty much it's a little wonky so we know it's not going to be a hundred percent but that's okay kind of gives us that little bit of grunge that we like so then using my bone folder I'm going to go right down in the middle <coughs> excuse me that I'm going to go down in the opposite direction. That way I get a really nice fold, a really nice fold without any of that bubbling and all that kind of stuff. And basically <clears throat> we have that. Now why did I fold these all as one versus each individual page? Because I kind of like when you fold it as one, you get this sort of rounded, I'm sorry, you get this sort of rounded spine going. Versus like really sharp creases. Like if I did each one, then I'd have this really sharp crease. And I find that it doesn't, for a pamphlet style that we're going to be doing like this, you just have too much air in between each page. So if you just take it as a full unit, put it down, kind of really pushing your fingers against the edges and holding it in place really nice and tight. And then going up and down, you get um, a really good fold. But we're going to be evening this up. So this is going to get evened up. So let's put this in. I really could keep it like, like this if I wanted to. Because it actually works well. But I want to have room for this to expand. And I want to get rid of those edges. So we're just going to go in. And we're going to trim this up. So the way, the best way of doing that is to get... <clears throat> metal edge ruler and using my pencil I'm going to just kind of roughly mark where this line is so roughly I know how much I need to get rid of there so let's stand up <laughs> and uh, let's line it all up And the best way of doing this whole process is to, okay, got this good. Okay, so we're going to take a really nice sharp blade. And the trick is to not try to go through this thing all at one time. <clears throat> so just do, just really thin, very easy scoring. Literally, I'm just going through and I'm... Just I'm continuing to cut basically a layer at a time. And then I can get right down through to the bottom. Nice and easily without any of <clears throat> the kind of little funny edges. See, it's all nice and smooth. A nice clean cut. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. And I can check my edges now to see if they look the way I want them. They look good. 
perfect. So we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. This is like the easiest way to get all your pages in your journals to where you want them without um, a whole lot of cutting each. I see people cut each sheet at a time and all that. And they're going to put them in the same journal. We don't need to do that. We just need to. Okay. Perfect. You just need to line it all up, put your get get all your pages together that you know you want to go together. And then taking your blade once again. I'm hardly I'm holding this with a very light hand. I want you guys to see this. Make sure I'm in a good frame. I'm it's really a light hand. I'm I'm not really putting any pressure. I'm literally just just really just going through it with the lightest of touch. If you try this, you're going to see it's going to make a huge difference in the way you cut through a lot of stuff. A lot of people think you got to bear down and that's where you run into problems. That's where it starts slicing funny. You get the little sort of odd, you know, edge. See, nice, beautiful edge again. Very easy. Now this is going to fit inside nicely because it should fit inside of my cover, the hard cover piece, because I want the cloth to kind of extend over the edges. That's, you know, the designs. So I want that to kind of flop over the edges a little bit. And what's nice too is as, as you build this up and put a lot of stuff in it, it's going to have a lot of expansion. You're going to have a lot of expansion. Your pages are not going to come out beyond here because you've um, got this little extra, you know, fabric to kind of absorb it. So now let's get our inside width. So just kind of going on what I'm seeing here, what I'm doing, just so you'll know, I'm, I'm lifting this up where I can see this edge of the, of the cardstock. And I'm just kind of making that mark underneath right here where I can pretty much see, um, it's going to put me inside of the cover, right? So then I'm, a, I'm just going to kind of flip through it so I can see exactly what I'm having, which is good. Okay, so that's going to get cut off now. Now these, these other strips that we did, you know, I throw those away, but these will end up being nice ones to keep for like extra for collaging, for, um, for making our DIY stamps that we like to make. This would be really good for those. So throw all these little pieces away. So now let's get this down and line it up. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to use my lines here on my exacto. So pretty much, I mean, on my um, exacto, on my on my mat. So this is all lined up nicely. Okay, so just make sure there, make sure here. So, um, <coughs> all right, sweetie, bye bye. Love the video. <laughs> Sorry, that was my daughter leaving out. <laughs> okay, she was saying, see you later. Okay, so. Here we are. So let's just go ahead again. Knife in hand. This stuff over. And just once again. And make sure your blade is sharp. I just, I mean, I always pop off. I, I, that's why I like this, the old pho, because you can just pop off and have a clean blade. The worst thing to do on this is an old blade. So always just kind of pop off a fresh blade when you're getting ready to do something like this. And then just very gently... Like I said, you could tear these also, but I just thought I'd take the opportunity to show how to cut this because I know a lot of people like straight edges <clears throat> and sometimes it's not the easiest. The way I see people who want straight edges do, they just do it all the pages individually and then put them together. So 
Look at all these yummy strips that we can use for things. So I'm gonna put this up in my my extras box up here. Where I put everything. Okay. So, and both sides of this is good. That's why I like to stain both sides because then I know my front and back is ready to go. So see, we've got a nice text block block already cut, ready to go. That can go inside of here. And so now I've got the right amount you can see. So we have our traveler's notebook size basically. And we've got this extra area for the growth. So this is perfect. <clears throat> So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew this now. We're going to go ahead and sew this pamphlet style. So that part is done. And then we're going to work on a few of our collage elements. We're still looking good time-wise. We're going to work on some of the inserts for the pockets and stuff. Let's get the book finished. So at least we have our book done. So here again, oh, let me clip this. So I'll have everything in place. It won't shift on me. So I like using these big um, plastic coated clips. I put one there. And I'm really pushing it in to my edge here. I really want to push it in so I know that um, it's tight. Put one on this side. Like that. Okay. I'm looking good top to bottom. Let's just double check everything. This is, this is my front cover. Yep. And my pages are going in it the correct way. I always like to double check everything before we get going. Okay. So now, <clears throat> like what I like to do is find the center, approximately the center hole, one, and I'm going to make this a five hole. Everybody normally sees the three holes. So let's make it a five hole so I can show you guys that in case you haven't seen that before or, you know, you don't see it. You haven't seen it in a while and maybe you saw someone do it and can't find that video or whatever. So we're going to do a five hole. It's still a pamphlet stitch. But when you have a bigger book like this or a thicker book, having five holes is nice. It just holds it down tighter. So one, so you have a middle hole end to end about an inch apart from the edge of your paper and then right in between the middle and let's say the bottom hole you just figure the halfway point and hit that and here again same thing figure out the halfway point and I think I'm going to to do this so that my tie off is in the middle because I may come back with <coughs> excuse me my um Kind of like a frog in my throat. Let me drink a little bit here. Sorry about that. Um, I may come back with a little bit of silk. I had here somewhere. I had some silk. What did I do with the silk? Hmm. I had a piece of silk that I thought, like my pink silk that I thought might be nice. But um, I'll find it. And just go ahead and glue that down on the outside of the spine here. That's weird. Okay. Well, anyway. So here I am. got my thread all ready to go. This time I thought I was used. When I was at Tandy, I was at Tandy Leather the other day with my daughter who's working on a project. She has an Etsy shop and she makes these really neat watch bands that go on the iWatches. And... It's really neat because she like buys like the Chanel or the Gucci or the, you know, Hermes ribbons and stuff like the And then she puts them into the watch band and the beautiful leather thing. Oh, they are gorgeous. So we went to Tandy for her to get some more leather. And I happen to see this right here. It's called, it's waxed braced cord or braided cord. And I was thinking if this would work similar to wax linen, because I know wax linen is kind of hard to find. And when you do, it's so expensive. This was only like $5 or $6 for this, this roll. So I'm going to try it out because if it does, then you guys can order this off a of Tandy Leather. Or if you have a Tandy Leather store, most of us do in your area, you can go buy this in every single color. They have such, they have really nice colors. So let's see if it works. I have a feeling it is. I like the way it feels already. 
It's not linen. It doesn't say what it is. I don't know if it's a poly thread or a cotton, but let's just see. It's the first time I'm using it, so we're gonna give it a try. And I'm gonna do it so that my tie off is in the inside. So whatever I actually cover the spine with will, won't have the little ties on the outside. So we're gonna go in from the inside, holding this edge. We go into the next hole. So into the next hole. Pull this out. Yep. I do like the way this is working so far. I think this is a nice substitute, actually. Um, so then we go, and then we go into the last hole. But this method, it's similar to, um, the, the way I sew this is similar to the Japanese stab binding, um, in that I'm gonna go up and I get, I go in and out, and then on the back side, you see where it looks like it's missed, but when it's done, all of this is gonna have thread on both the inside and outside. So now what I'm gonna do is go back into this hole. And what that does is it allows me to pick up this middle stitch. So let's just make everything tight. This is a good time to make sure that our stitches are tight. See? So on the outside there, we have these two stitches right now. Let me see if you can see them. One there and one there. So now on the inside, we're gonna skip over the middle hole. We come out of there last. And then we skip over and we go to the next one. And we do this, we repeat the same thing basically. Go out. I'm gonna go back in here. I do like this Tandy. This is actually quite nice. It's a better substitute than using like embroidery floss or something like that. Because it's already waxed and it seems like it's really strong. And of course, if you're using it to sew leather, it'll hold books together nicely. Okay, so here I've come out and now I have this space here. So I'm gonna go back in, which is gonna allow me to grab that space there that's left. And this is the part of the video, if you need to stop and slow it down, um, so you can really see this if this is the first time you're doing this stitch. Now I'm on the outside, and I have this one space left, so I'm going to go back in the middle. So see how nicely that's going to just clean all of our stitches up, and our whole outside is, is done. And I love this color, um, and it works really well. I thought it would work well with coffee and tea staining. Uh, when I was at the store and I looked at it, because I was, I was going to buy it like almost in every color. I'm like, wait a minute, Robin. Just buy it and try it and see if it works. But I will definitely be going back and getting more because they had a beautiful burgundy, a dark brown, a lighter creamy color. So now what we want to do is tie off. So we're going to look inside and make sure that all of this is good as well. So we've got this long piece in the middle. So what we do is we have one cord under on one side and one on the other. So I have one here and one here, because we're gonna tie off over the long stitch, because we have this really long stitch there, right, that we came down and went over the center hole. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that everything is looks good on the outside, it's all nice and tightly sewn. I really like the way it looks. And then on the inside, we're looking good. So now all we have to do is left over right, you just do a square knot left over right, tighten it down, and then take the right back over the left. Um, tighten it. Got a nice knot there. And then <clears throat> we can just cut this off. One of the things you can do, just to let you know, I'm going to cut mine off right now, but you could literally keep the cord long and put some kind of um, charm or some kind of weight on it. And you can actually put... You take these off. You can use them as um, page, holding your place on a place on a page. So you literally could use it where it would come down, like this, and hang in your book and hang out. So that's one of the ways that you could actually make a nice um, um, 
page mark. Just wanted to show you that in case you want to have the option of trying that. But I'm going to cut this down about like that. Now I've got that neat little center there. And our book is sewn. Look at this. So this is great. So we have a nice traveler's notebook size, roughly, um, size booklet. So let's take a look. Flip through and see how we like it. I love the staining. And the staining adds interest to the page, but at the same time, you know, you can write on it. We can continue embellishing it. Now, this, like I said, these are, this is just some of the images. I think this is just nine images from the pack. This month's printables, October. And you can literally do this with all the printables. When you um, print them out, you can turn them all into entire pages. I do them so that's why I have some collages, some straight pages. I try to do things that are not so much that you can't come and make them your own, but at the same time, it's enough interest that it gives you a page to build up from. So I'm really liking this. So this right here makes a 20 or 40 page book because I use 10 sheets. And if we look at it front and back, that would give us um, 40. <clears throat> okay, so that's done. I'll we'll put this to the side and just, I like to put clips on it because it still has to kind of settle down. You could also put this under weight. And I, like I said, I could come back and put um, a little, let me show you what I'm talking about. And I'll decide if I'm going to do that. But if you, if you wanted to do it, wrong, <clears throat> wrong bag. Where is my, uh, hmm. You could either use some of the sorry silk. You guys have seen me use that before, but you know, you could use um, some sorry silk or something like that that you could use as an edger and you could glue that down. We also have our, our washi tape that can be made. And literally that's another thing you can do. You actually can make washi tape and then tape over this if you want to have a little bit more, um, what do you call it? Um, security or whatever on the spine. This is looking pretty good. So let's now work on our fold outs. So, I'll make a couple things really quickly here. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Let's just cut them real quick. So these can be tags and pockets. Let me get this right. Okay. Okay. So this right here is nice. You could have it as an additional tag. It can be a belly band. It could be a narrower belly band. It could be that in a small pocket. This can this strip can be used a lot of ways. I mean, any of it can be used as any as, as many ways as you imagine it. <clears throat> but just sharing with you some of what I was thinking about when I was designing them, the different uses that we could have with them. So. So we'll keep this one aside because we can figure out exactly what we're going to do with that one. And then here. Cut those. And it's nice when you have patterns on the other side because now, um, you know, it's already ready just to be. So literally we can take these like that. And I normally have one of these cards. I've just taken and pre-cut. I don't know who I saw do this. I saw someone do this. Can't remember who, but I thought it was a really great idea just to, so I've cut my edges on a credit on one of these key cards 
to be the different sizes and shapes. Like I have a bag of different um, tags. So I just went and found all the different sizes that I liked. And then I used them as guides and I cut them. So then I would have the exact size that I want each time. So I line it up. You guys have probably seen this before. And I flip it and I do the same thing. So this, just this quick, these are, these can be cards, could be tags, um, just sort of journal tucks, tucks for inside of our book. We'll put those over there. Um, these I'm gonna go ahead and cut out because they can actually be, we'll make some pockets. Let's go ahead and cut this the long way real quick. Sometimes I, I get a straighter cut. <laughs> so let's just see how we'll use these. I'll just use some of these a few different ways in this journal so you guys can have an idea of how I use them and you know what I'm what my thinking was in working with this. And I definitely have, I know I've been asked for the uh, um I think I said this earlier, but I'll say it again. For the um, sort of European, old world um, ephemera. And I have, I've been, I've been collecting some. And also I have lots of, lots of old books. And um, pieces I've bought at flea markets when I've been in Europe so now it's like collecting all of those and I'm gonna put those together in a collection should be fun okay so let's put these to the side because these could be pockets so we have pockets we have belly band <clears throat> we already have tags done and then let's clean up our mess first of all got my trash right here Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on our fold. So this is done on cardstock too. So I printed this out on cardstock so that I could have a um, a little more substantive booklet. But you can, but I've done them on um, paper as well. They work well like that too. So you know, whatever you have will work. So these are real easy to now like I said I'm doing these right now as a um, three fold but you could literally do them as a two fold as well and use the other one as um, tags they could all be done as tags and pockets or they also like the one that I just cut this one you could literally cut this down and fold it in half and then have a flip up um, booklet that you could sew into the top and do it that way. So just look at this as a puzzle. Kind of design these with the idea of a puzzle in, in mind that they can be, this could be a two fold booklet. You could cut all the way across just like I did with this one and just make the whole thing be another three fold. So there's a lot of ways of working with these. So just get your creativity on. But this is how I work in my studio, especially when I'm making a lot of my books and stuff like that. When I want to put other fold outs and other smaller booklets within the book and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, this is how I work. And I really like being able to, you know, create this old world authentic sort of look. You guys know that. So I'm kind of thinking about that all the time. And at the same time, I'm making sure that I'm using like my eco stain um, papers, stain dyed, you know, whatever you'd like. Okay, so now we're going to turn both of these into a really quick booklet. So I like to use my scoreboard. You don't have the scoreboard. You, we have these lines right here. So you can use those to follow. It's going to be very simple. 
but um, I need to cut that one more time. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick. I missed this bit right here. So, yes, fun, fun, fun. Oh, I love these. I'm just loving these patterns. Oh, goodness. And this, once they've stained like this, they just look so good. Okay, so here I'm just going to very lightly, you know, you don't want to dig down and get a hole in your stuff. So just very lightly score. Um, right down the middle. So you have a scoreboard, just kind of take it easy. Same thing. Even if you're using paper, you can know, of course you can use your score for paper, but just get the, you know, the, the lightest of touch here because you don't want to get, like poke a hole right in the middle of it. Okay. So. So we've got that fold so that just goes down like that and this one can come in and we're done so you can do it you can flip it either way whatever you want your front to be doesn't matter and then we have this really nice back and the same thing is true here I'll fold this over fold this over we have a really cool tag. And you can cut either way. You can decide this is going to be the top and this is the bottom. I mean, there's really no right or wrong. It just depends on what you want. Now, this one does because we have our picture there. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to make these little um, booklets really quickly. So let me just grab... Some of this, I love this school line paper. And let me just go ahead and tear this off. Make sure I'm getting it. Yep. All right. So let's take and get our first fold in here and here again. I'm just eyeballing it. So we'll just we just want to make sure that the fold falls inside of just have it fall right inside of the the fold of our booklet. So let's go ahead and tear that. And then I'll just fold this in half again. It may be a little shorter, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So we can put those in there like that. And here again, if you want, you can sew these in or you can staple them in. I'll staple mine in. That's good. Okay. I have the Tim Holtz tiny stapler, but I don't think that's going to get inside of here. I think I might have to use my long arm. Let's just see. I don't think it's going to. Let me just... I'm not crazy about it. I got a little overhang here, which is okay, but I can get rid of it too. Why not? kind of even things up a bit so see how quickly we actually are making a journal and getting this thing done pretty quickly I don't think it's going to be enough but we're going to try because I love these tiny staplers really do so let's see nope it's not it's not going to make it so we're going to pull out the long arm see if I can do that without knocking everything over because I keep it tucked over here but okay here we are so love this 
Um, so now I want to make sure that my staples are in the inside. And I think I'll just make two because it's not like we have to worry about this falling apart or anything. So I'll kind of get it maybe like right there. And then go down about the same bit from the edge. Okay, so here we have that. We have our inside. Nice little booklet. All done up. Let's make another one real quickly. So we have this other one here. Get that out the way. And I could have cut these at the same time if I had thought about it, but I didn't. So let's go ahead and make my little mark right there and then line this up. The other one I was good because I had um, the paper itself had line in it. <laughs> but this not so much. So some more tea stained paper. I think this one worked really good just in half. So I think I can just do this in half. And then in half again. So these little booklets are really easy to make. And like I said, we could do a two-fold or the three-fold. We're doing the three-fold, but you could have cut... Like I said, any one of these off, made it a tag, and have a two-fold too. So there's a lot of different ways of working with this. Put this in. And same thing. Let me see, is that the way I want to do it? <clears throat> yeah, we'll do that way. So... Ready? Down to here. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we have that one done. And so I did that on this side. It doesn't matter. You can do either side. Of course, this thing can open and close a whole lot of ways. And then, let me see, what else did I have? I had some additional stuff that I had done. So like this is un um, stained. This is some from earlier or a few days back when I actually when I was designing the kit, I was working with these. So this is out of paper and then the cardstock flips down so you can actually use your um, washi tape that you can make or if you already have. But with this kit, we have these washi tape strips. So I took one of the strips and uh, made the tape. So this is with paper, so you can see it works just as well. Um, but I knew I had some extra stuff here, so I think what I'm going to do is like with this one, we can make a pocket. Let's make ourselves a quick pocket. But I'm gonna make it, if it opens this way, I'll make it on this side. So just sort of make a notch inside and the inside edge. And it's just as quick. All these little things, it can be a belly band, like I said, this is all. This can be in a pocket. And actually all of these can be printed out on paper or cardstock. And you could just use them lots of different ways. So we'll take one and put on the inside of here. So that'll be a nice pocket so we're going to grab let me let this start coming down while that's happening we'll come back to this so taking this one and I could do the same thing if I wanted to put a pocket inside of this one just showing you guys different ideas so taking our corner 
cut you can turn this into um, a tag shape let's just see which one I want to use like that flip it over grab this so you kind of make this tag shape booklet so I like to cut it after <clears throat> I put the pages in and that way all the pages also will take on the shape of the, the of the tag so that's done that's ready to put inside of there okay move all this out the way back over here so my, I don't want to confuse myself <laughs> so Now, inside of here, we could do something on the inside cover there. I mean, you know, you know that it, we can do a million things because all of this filling up our journals does take a little bit of time. So we're not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you a few different ways that I'm going to work with mine. I'll make that a tag right there. Since I have the blank, <clears throat> the blank paper there, it's cool because... We have a place that we can add a little interest. We'll put one there. And I have a, I had two tags. I mean, I had two pockets. I had these two tags, which we can put in our pockets. So let's see where else we want to put a pocket. Let's just pick a spot. Let's just go here. So we'll put it on the opposite page. Just... Yeah, because you could see is you can put tons of tags and fold outs and everything in here. But the most important thing is that you can literally, you know, make this journal easily in a couple hours. And that well, you can do it in an hour like we're doing here, basically, because we'll be coming up on about an hour. I think it's about an hour, right? Maybe a little bit more. Um, but then, you know, you want to account for dry time. So I counted for the dry time as well. Okay, so we'll grab our Fabri-Tac. And I like to do the Fabri-Tac when I'm having, when I'm using um, cardstock like this. Because it really does lock things in place. It doesn't take a long time for it to dry. Okay. And this one I had a pattern on the opposite side in case I wanted to use it as a tag. So you have that option. If when you when you stain your papers, if you do both sides, I just kind of stack them. If you do both sides, and it gives you the option. Because to me, it's nothing worse than, <clears throat> where's my tissue? It's nothing worse than getting ready to use something for a tag or for a booklet or something. And the other side is not as exciting as the, <laughs> it's the front side. So I try to just do all of my papers so I have that option. Because if I'm going to, if I'm going to stain them, it's no... You know, it's nothing to getting both sides done. And even when I do the patterns, I just stack whatever I'm using to make the pattern. I just stack them. And then that way, um, so that's good. That way it's making it on both sides. So let's grab and put this one here. Love it. Clean that. Okay, let me get it on the right side. I'm famous for <clears throat> flipping it and just not thinking. Start gluing it the wrong way. I have more of this, but I was trying to get this down to the end. My new glitter glue came in too, you know, that 
because I was I had run out but it lasted me near it actually lasted me a year I want to say it was like last year this time that I bought my first one so I think that's pretty good and I use it a lot so pretty cool so let's go ahead and yep, put this in here Okay, so I kind of hold it in place first and just kind of lightly press it. That way you're not kind of, it gets to set up before you start pressing too hard. So that, that way you get the least amount of glue coming out. Okay. Okay. And like we talked about, I like this glue anyhow, because if you get any overages, it just ro rolls off like rubber cement. So you don't get all that stain in and, you know, that just messy glue look. Just keep on rubbing it and it just rolls right off any extra that you get. So that's the nice part about this glue. Alrighty, so we have a pocket here. And our pocket back here, and like I said, we could have tons of pockets, right? That's good. And this right here could be another tuck or um, pocket. But since I've only done two pockets, we'll just stick this down in here for right now, just for, you know. But obviously, I would just keep on filling this up with pockets and... All kind of good stuff now I can use this I can create a belly band too so we could put a belly band right here on the front which would give oops <laughs> look what I did I actually put everything in upside down oh well I'm gonna have some upside down tucks well that's cool because I'm not going to put my book in upside down so that's an example of not paying attention to the front of my book before I started putting things in, but that's okay. Because now we're just going to stick it in at the top. You can just do them like that. Because the pockets are nice and tight, so they're not going to, um, they're going to be okay. So where's the other one? So this right here, we're going to go ahead and make this a pocket. And, yep. So, a really good example of why we double check. But that's fine because I put po I put up my pockets at the top oftentimes and at the bottom just depending when I'm doing my books I put them everywhere sides top so those are top pockets now and I'm just doing a small one for inside of here but our book I mean our book is done and of course you could just have so much fun just continuing to make pockets and tucks. And I do have the smaller tags, so. Did I do this one correct? Do you believe it? I did the same thing. <laughs> well, I'm hitting home runs. I'm not gonna take it up though. It just becomes a top tuck. That is so funny that I've done the same thing. Crazy. Okay, it's all good. Where are my little... I know you guys are laughing at me today. This is hilarious. So, I have smaller on the sheets. We have the smaller... Let me see. I think I showed them to you before where they're put my hands on them. But they're the, the full sheet of this size tags. And so these are all of them. So there are 12 of them. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick this in like that. Stick it in here now too to make sure it goes in. So 
gonna trim this down just a little bit. Just a little bit. On both sides, just so it can go in. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I gotta laugh at myself on that one. It's all good. Alrighty. So, stick it in like that. And, uh, so you can cut the top or not. I'm not, I have one that I wanted to show you guys where it's, let me see this one. We've done it where we've done the top and, and then this one is not cut. So stick them in. And uh, we have our other tags. So of course, like I said, this, we could just continue to fill this book up with, um, with all of the different tags and belly bands and everything that there is in this particular kit. So I wanted to show you guys how I make my um, sort of traveler notebook junk journals. And this is kind of where you would just start the process of filling up page. A lot of times I fill them up with my, um, with, with jelly prints. Um, I collage in these. These are great travel journals. You can grab these and take them, um, out of town with you. This, this style. And, um, in this case, I think it makes a really beautiful vintage journal with these papers and just some coffee staining. So there we have it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you've gotten over laughing at me with these, I can't believe it. I did it twice. Just not checking, you know, just conscious of the time and wanting to, um, cause I could be forever. I can lose track when I'm working on stuff like this and I could be forever just filling this up with pockets or doing stuff like that. And then, you know, we're two hours down and I haven't shown you everything I wanted to show you. So there we have it. Hope you guys love this. Um, this project and this journal, this pack, I love this pack. I just think it's full of some of the most amazing, amazing, um, antique Asian ephemera, just lots of good stuff. And a lot of this stuff is so hard just to come up, you know, upon bunches of it. So there we have it. All right. Well, take care. Once again, let's not forget about our 10K and, you know, just shout it out and make sure that you're entering it if you want to win lots of great prizes. If you like this video, please thumb it up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and um, I'll see you guys again next week. All right. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.